Now, in the early 20th century, a new approach to history in general begins to uh, take hold, and that reverberates on the Civil War. This is what the next sort of school of interpretation, what we call the progressive historians. This is what we call the progressive era, right? The 1910s, 1900s, 1910s. The, the, or this is sometimes called the Beardian point of view because it's most associated with the writings of Charles Beard, a great Columbia professor for a time. Um, and vis-a-vis -vis the Civil War, we should, let us not forget his wife, Mary Beard. Charles and Mary Beard, in their great book, The Rise of American Civilization, published in the 1920s, had a very, very influential chapter or two on the Civil War. Now remember, this the Progressive Era is a time of bitter class conflict, a lot of violent labor stri strife, the beginnings of social welfare legislation, the government beginning to take a responsibility for the welfare of uh, people's ordinary lives, a lot of concern with political corruption, and the rise of what was called the economic interpretation of history. Um, basically, what the progressive writers said, and it comes from looking around at politics around them, Political ideas, political ideologies are merely masks for economic self-interest. Don't look at what politicians say. Look at what they do and where their money, where the, follow the money if you want to understand what politics is all about. Um, Beard had first tried this to tremendous uproar from defenders of the American way in 1913 when he published his Economic Interpretation of the Constitution which tried to knock the Founding Fathers off their pedestal and say the reason they wanted a strong central government through their constitution was because they all owned bonds. They, o they owned bonds issued by the government during the revolution, and they wanted to be repaid. They needed a government strong enough to have taxation and borrowing to repay them their bonds. So this is a pretty crass motivation, right, for what is, was normally seen as a great historic, you know, um, uh, uh, achievement of the Constitution. Um, and when it comes to the Civil War, the same thing. The Republican Party, forget about anti-slavery, forget, in fact, Beard writes, I can write the history of the Civil War and not even mention slavery, except in a footnote. Well, then what was it all about? It was about a northern industrial class seeking economic self-interest and blocked by southern control, planter control of the federal government. They wanted a high tariff to protect industry from British competition. They wanted the government to build up the economic infrastructure, the Pacific Railroad, other kinds of buildings. They wanted a Homestead Act to settle the West with free farmers who would be a market for industrial goods. That's why they try to seize power, in, not because of anything to do with slavery. And similarly, the Southerners, even though they were slave owners, it was really agricultural interests. They, were, they, they wanted free trade. They did not want the government to promote industry. It was agriculture. So in, in a way, it's a kind of a, Beard's view is influenced by Karl Marx and Marxism, but it's not a proletariat versus, say, bourgeoisie, as Marx would say. No, it's different economic interests. Agriculture versus industry is what's going on here. Now, in a great chapter in that great book, The Rise of American Civilization, the Beards, call, the chapter on the Civil War is called The Second American Revolution. The Second American Revolution. And they meant that very literally. That is to say, what is a revolution? It is one class seizing control of the national state and evicting another class. That's what the Civil War is all about. The industrial class of the North kicks out the agrarian class of the South and seizes power. But you see, slavery has really not much uh, to do with it. Um, the tariff is much more important to them than the slavery issue. And, um, and, and one hears echoes of that even today, as I said a couple of weeks ago. You know, I, I go around and lecture, and people always say it was really about the tariff, wasn't it? It's amazing the afterlife, the long afterlife of the Beardian, um, the Beardian approach. Um, the slavery issue was artificial, in other words. It was used by politicians 
to galvanize voters, but it wasn't really what, what, is, uh, what is going on.